On December 7, 1941, the Empire of Japan launched a surprise attack on the United States Naval Base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Just one day later, the U.S. declared war on the Pacific and launched a campaign that would span four devastating years until the Japanese surrender on August 14, 1945. In August of 1942, just two months after the U.S. Navy achieved a decisive victory at the Battle of Midway, the Allied troops launched their first major offensive attack against Japan. American forces landed on Guadalcanal in the Solomon Island chain. It was there, in the heat of battle, where heroes were made. Who was Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone? How did he single-handedly kill 38 Japanese soldiers? And what was his fate? Let's try and find out. Hello, I'm Mike Joburg, a Marine Corps veteran and filmmaker, and we will try to answer these questions on today's episode of Forgotten History. John Bassalone was born on November 4, 1916, in Buffalo, New York. He was the sixth of ten children. His five older siblings were born in Raritan, New Jersey, before the family moved to Buffalo, where John was born. They returned to Raritan in 1918. At the age of 15, Bassalone dropped out of high school and worked as a golf caddy until he joined the Army. Bassalone served three years in the Army during the 1930s, where he was a champion boxer but it wouldn't be until he enlisted in the Marine Corps and the country's subsequent plunge into World War II that he would reach his legendary standing. On the night of October 24, 1942, in the jungles of Guadalcanal, one of the hundreds of islands that comprised the Solomons, during the Battle of Henderson Field, the then Sergeant Bassalone was commanding two 30 caliber machine gun sections from the 1st Battalion, 7th Marines that were tasked with holding a narrow pass at the Tenero River. As the small gun crews of the Marines dug in for the night, a Japanese regiment numbering 3,000 men under the command of Lieutenant General Hayakutaki of the 17th Japanese Army attacked the line, hammering the Marines with grenades and mortar fire. The American forces were defending the Lunga perimeter that guarded Henderson Field on Guadalcanal, which the Allies had captured from the Japanese in the landings on Guadalcanal. Hayakutaki's force was sent to Guadalcanal in response to the Allied landings with the mission of recapturing the airfield and driving the Allied forces off the island. Wave after wave were kept at bay by the small teams of Marines until one of the gun crews was disabled by enemy fire. With total disregard for his own life, Bassalone carried about 90 pounds of weaponry and ammunition to the silenced gun pit, running a distance of 200 yards through enemy fire and encountering Japanese soldiers along the route, whom he killed with his Colt 45 pistol. Bassalone continued running back and forth between gun pits, supplying ammunition to those desperately in need and clearing gun jams for his junior marines. Amidst the carnage, Bassalone lost his Abestos gloves, hand protection critical for holding or swapping out the scalding hot barrels of the heavily used machine guns. During the height of battle, Bassalone barehanded the searing barrel of his machine gun without hesitation and continued putting rounds downrange, killing an entire wave of Japanese soldiers and burning his hands and arms in the process. Enemy bodies were literally piling up so rapidly that he had to vacate their defensive positions to knock over the growing wall of flesh so they could re-establish clear fields of fire. An entire Japanese regiment was thwarted by the gun crews, and by the time reinforcements arrived, only Bassalone and two other Marines were left standing. Bassalone used his crew's machine guns, his pistol, and a machete to kill at least 38 enemy soldiers by himself. PFC Nash W. Phillips was with Bassalone on Guadalcanal and recounted the otherworldly efforts by his sergeant. Bassalone had a machine gun on the go for three days and nights without sleep, rest, or food, said Phillips, who lost a hand in the fight. While receiving medical treatment, Phillips recalled Bassalone's mythical appearance as he came in to check on him. He was barefooted and his eyes were red as fire, he said. His face was dirty black from gunfire and the lack of sleep. His shirt sleeves rolled up to his shoulders, and he had a 45 tucked into the waistband of his trousers. He just dropped by to see how I was making out, me and the others in the section. I'll never forget him. 
On October 26, Ayukataki called off any further attacks and ordered his forces to retreat. American forces buried or burned the remains of 1,500 Japanese soldiers. U.S. Army soldier John E. Standard said, The carnage of the battlefield was a sight that perhaps only a combat infantryman who has fought at close quarters could fully comprehend and look upon without the feeling of horror. The body stretched out for over half a mile. Bastalone will go on to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions on Guadalcanal. Only part of this medal belongs to me, Bastalone said. Pieces of it belong to the boys who are still on Guadalcanal. He believed this so strongly, he turned down the opportunity to have President Franklin D. Roosevelt bestow the medal, opting instead to have the ceremony in the field with his unit. Bastalone returned to the U.S. to assist in the war bond effort. His arrival was highly publicized, and his hometown held a parade in his honor when he returned. The homecoming parade occurred on September 19th and drew a huge crowd with thousands of people, including politicians, celebrities, and the national press. The parade even made national news in Life magazine. After the parade, Bastalone toured the country raising money for the war effort and achieved a celebrity status. He was offered a commission and a chance to spend the rest of the war in Washington, but foregoing the public attention being a war hero yielded and opting instead to return to combat. Bastalone stated, I ain't no officer and I ain't no museum piece. I belong back with my outfit. Bastalone left the limelight for Camp Hilton, California, where he met and married a fellow Marine Sergeant, Lena Rigi, in 1944. After his request to return to the fleet was approved, Bastalone was assigned to C Company, 1st Battalion, 27th Marine Regiment, 5th Marine Division. On February 19, 1945, the first day of the invasion of Iwo Jima, he was serving as a machine gun section leader on Red Beach 2. While the Marines landed, the Japanese concentrated their fire at the incoming Marines from heavily fortified blockhouses staged throughout the island. With his unit pinned down, Bastalone made his way around the side of the Japanese positions until he was directly on top of the blockhouses. Then he attacked with grenades and demolitions, single-handedly destroying the entire strong point and its defending garrison. He then fought his way towards airfield number one and aided a marine tank that was trapped in an enemy minefield under intense mortar and artillery barrages. He guided the heavy vehicle over the hazardous terrain to safety, despite heavy weapon fire from the Japanese. As he moved along the edge of the airfield, he was killed by a Japanese mortar shrapnel. He was only 28 years old. Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone would be posthumously awarded the Purple Heart and the Navy Cross for his actions on Iwo Jima. He was buried at Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia. His widow, Lena M. Bassalone, died on June 11, 1999, at the age of 86, and is buried at Riverside National Cemetery in Riverside, California. Lena's obituary notes that she never remarried and was buried still wearing her wedding ring. The United States Navy destroyer, the USS Bassalone, was named in his honor and commissioned in July of 1949. It remained in service until November of 1977. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments or show ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.